gosh, bitch. I'm putting that on my business card, although I don't have one. But um, thank you. Um, so thanks to Russ for setting the bar really fucking high. Um, I have way less interesting visuals and stories, but I did bring you Gradients and Helvetica. So hopefully that will work for you. Um, so a little bit about me. Um, you heard some of the badass bitchery stuff happening, but um, I actually went to school to be a traditional graphic designer, learned the craft, fell in love with the craft, and then somehow got pulled out to California to work at IDEO, where I just got thrown in, um, and it was totally sink or swim style. Um, I was at IDEO for about seven, eight years, working on a wide range of projects across industries, Nokia, pre-iPhone, back when they were leading, um, a whole bunch of like really big you know, Fortune 500 companies and trying to help them innovate. Um, but what I didn't realize is how much leadership there would be in trying to help these massive companies turn. Um, shortly after, I went to Square and helped build the register design teams of the iPad product. If you've had coffee, you've used the product. Um, <laughs> and then uh, Pinterest to build up the design team there as well. And now I'm a design leadership coach. So the things I'm gonna share with you today are mostly things that I learned, but also things that I've observed amongst other design leaders as well. So today, I wanna to talk to you, wait, how many designers are actual leaders in the room? You can define leader however you want, some. Okay, how many aspire to be some form of a leader, creative director, manager, something, influencer? Okay, cool. Well, this is for you. Um, <laughs> um, you know, first of all, you're probably freaking out a little bit. It's okay. It's, it's scary. I get it. Russ, I was there too. I had that moment where I was like, oh God, I don't want to do this. Um, this is a multi-million dollar project and you just put me in it and I'm wearing ripped jeans and, and pigtails, but that's okay. It's all good. You're, <laughs> I was there. You're probably going to be there. Um, and in fact, I get emails from designers every week saying, hey, like, I'm kind of going through this transition, but I don't know what to do. Uh, I want to be a maker, but this whole management thing seems really fucking awful. Um, well, don't panic. It's okay. Um, and if you don't want to go down the leadership path, that's okay too. I support you in that. But I want to share some things that I've learned along the way that helped me embrace being a leader and actually fall in love with it in some ways. So the first thing for me was actually to... Well, okay, let's be real. I went and grabbed a shit ton of, sorry for my language, but it's just who I am, a shit ton of management books and was like, oh my God, I gotta learn, I gotta figure out how to manage. And I went through this like crazy, crazy thing where I was like, I am a different person. The thing that actually helped me come back to reality and helped me get excited about what I was doing was embrace the fact that management and design leadership was a creative function. And in fact, a lot of the things I was gonna do did leverage my design skills. It's not all design, there's definitely a whole bunch of football coach in there. Um, but just that mindset really put me at ease. Um, and it made me realize like, okay, I can do this. It's not just about hiring, it's about designing a team. It's about designing incentives, it's about in um, designing the way that we work. And that really got me into a much better place. And in fact, the designers that kind of embrace that creativity and embrace the designer part of themselves as a leader, well, I think they do a really fucking fantastic job. Because the reality is a lot of the skills that make us a great designer are also the skills that make us a great leader. Strategic, collaborative, creative, inventive, empathetic, curious, visionary. That sounds like a leader I want to work for. And a lot of you already have those skills, so don't forget them. Um, but here's this thing, um, <laughs> if you do decide to go down the path, one of the most important things you can do is own your time. Um, the reality is you're going to get sucked into meetings, you're going to get sucked into all these things, you're going to get pulled into things that, that doesn't feel very good. And the most important thing for you to learn, and it was the, one of the most important things for me to learn, is to own your time. If you are going to design your team and take on that mentality, it's so critical to actually step away from the chaos, step away from the stress, to schedule time. Literally, I know it sounds silly, but literally schedule time for you to think. Um, it is the one thing that I see designers, not just, or sorry, leaders, not just designers doing, but they're all struggling with it. Leaders across tech, 
So please, schedule time for you to think, whether it's to digest the meetings you just had, to brainstorm ideas, to breathe, to get inspiration, whatever it is, take that time. Because as you know, with any design process, you need that space. Okay. I don't want to talk about coding or not. <laughs> um, and, and a lot of that is because it's so execution focused, that conversation. But if you truly want to have strategic impact, please learn the business. Consider how design can help the organization achieve business goals while maintaining what you know so well, being user-centric, being design-led. Spend less time considering the execution because your team should, in theory, be able to help execute against that. And spend more time wondering what and why. I have so many designers come to me and say, how can I prove the value of design? Well, start with the business. What are the goals? How can you help them achieve them? How can design deliver on that? Well, he said this, so you know what he said. Um, <laughs> Uh, but the reality is, and this one was really hard for me, and it's still really hard for me. Um, the reality is there's no one-size-fits-all solution to the perfect design team or the perfect design culture. If you think there is, you're totally going to be screwed because there's not. The reality is designing a team is about understanding the business needs, the needs of the organization, and being able to create what is right for your team. Um, that means there's going to be some exploration, some experimentation, mess ups along the way. And just like designing comps and all those things, get the feedback, get the help. It's totally worth it, what Russ said. <laughs> and honestly, one of the reasons why I decided to become a design leadership coach is because I was fortunate enough at different points in my career to have a coach. And the, the benefit of having that person to help me navigate some of the complexities they empowered me to, to solve the problems myself, but they were there to support me through that role and through that process. And you don't have to do it alone either. Yeah, okay. Um, this is one of my favorite tweets. Um, but uh, authentic leadership is a little buzzwordy. Um, but the reality is your team will see right through you if you're not authentic to who you are. There are certainly times in my startup life where I felt like I had to adjust who I was to be successful, to be influential. I figured it out, as well to be, but it didn't feel quite right. Um, and your team's going to see right through it. I think my team did. Um, and even if they don't, it's probably going to wear you down over time. It did for me. Um, and so the moments where I was actually able to be my most authentic self as a leader, lead the way that felt appropriate to me, not to that culture or some other leader standards, was the moment when I started to feel energized and fulfilled and excited and truly feeling like, okay, this leadership thing, I got this, I can do this. Um, and you know, honestly, my leadership style is, is pretty different from typical tech leaders, and uh, that's okay. But because when I'm leading authentically, my team sees it, they respect it, they value it, they follow me to new jobs, <laughs> they become lifelong friends. Um, and that's because my integrity as a leader then from my ability to stand true to my values and to fight for them. So this is one that I live by on a regular basis. Okay. We're all makers. <laughs> so the reality is that you may be designing and designing your team as a leader. Don't forget to just make. Um, I forgot, and I paid for it. There's this incredible value of being able to dig deep into that raw, unconstrained creativity that we all have and probably sparked the beginning of our careers. Um, and there's a lot of value in breaking free from the constraints of problem solving every single day. Um, I see a lot of designers around me, particularly design leaders, seeking that. I think Russ is into like woodworking. I've seen some serious images. Um, screen printing. Uh, I love to bookbind. I started making jewelry last year. I have no freaking clue why. I just did. And also, it's pretty amazing to work with raw material because I can't make it perfect. And it was so wonderful to reconnect with my creativity. That was one of my goals when I left my last full-time job was to reconnect with my creativity. And it seemed like such a really strange goal to have because I'm a creative, I'm a designer, this is what I do. But the reality was is I got so caught up in the day-to-day problem-solving 
that I forgot to just reconnect with that unconstrained energy thing that we have that we love so much. And making can be eye-opening, mind-expanding, therapeutic, fun. And so when I was more energized in making, my team saw that and felt that as well. This is a great quote from one of my favorite people. Uh, she just said it recently at Source last week. Margaret was talking about the, the qualities of making. It is so good for the creative soul to be relieved of constraints or to trade them in for new ones. Love, Margaret. So make for yourself, but in theory, design for others. So leave the power of design to create incredible, useful things that serves others. Make for yourself. Um, we have such an incredible skill set. We can make things tangible. We can make technology human. We have the chance to create good in the world, so please use it. More than ever, we need design leaders of all shapes and sizes and experience levels to find ways to design for others. If we want to convince the world of impact of design, which people ask me all the time, the time is now. So I look forward to seeing the things that you make as leaders in design.